We would never make out. We could make out. No, we could not. You don't have to be serious while making out. They're just having fun. You want to laugh in each other's faces while we're making out? Yes. Is there anything you want to talk about? Um. Yeah, I have a couple of things. Do you have a couple of things? <laughs> I want to show you my turkey cake. Do you want to see it? Yeah. I do. Going. Cutie made a turkey cake. Did you make it? Be oh, you won't be able to hear her. I want to know if she made it because of the the turkey cake that's going viral on TikTok. What? No. Oh, sorry. What turkey cake is going viral? Just like the the Baskin Robbins one. What? They have it's just one? an ice cream cake. It forget it. Stupid. Yours is better. Da, 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 da. Oh wow, yeah, that's not at all what they are doing. That's amazing. Are those cookies? Do you like him? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's cookies with royal icing, but the royal icing isn't set, so he's leaking. Are you bringing it to Thanksgiving? And he's a bunt cake, so he's also leaking. Or he's He has like, a hole. Yeah, he's cute. Are you bringing him to Thanksgiving? But I threw him together in 20 minutes. If I didn't throw him together in 20 minutes, he'd be way cuter, but it's fine. I like him scuffed. I'm not bringing him to Thanksgiving because I have to drive all the way to Washington and he won't make it. Oh, that's really sad. Yeah, so I'll have to find a doorstep or something to leave him on. <laughs> I would I would be afraid <laughs> if that just like showed up unannounced on my doorstep. I don't know how I feel about that. The spooky turkey. Yeah. I, I like it. Was a, I think it was a, a fentanyl turkey. Uh, that's fair. Um, I, uh... I am. Um, I have to. I'm driving all the way to Washington before Thanksgiving. Our house is getting fumigated this week, so that's really fun. Really super fun. If you guys don't know, when you're apparently okay. Also, there's not really. I'm sure there's termites in Washington, but it's not the same as freaking California. Ah, there's a bug on my pineapple. It's a termite. Not friend. No, it's a weird ass moth. Oh. Yeah, but I like it. Well, his now. <laughs> He's not leaving either. Okay, you bye. See you later. You can live with the moth, I guess. Um. Anyway, if you don't know, I've never had a termite problem. I actually know like nothing about termites. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Welcome to Cal. Wait, you are from California. Yeah, but I never had never had a termite problem. Oh. Apparently, it's really common in California. If you're from California, you might have a termite problem. You have to get your house, like, tented every five years or something. And there are termites flying around this house, which means that they've been here for three to five years, which means you have to get it tented. The cool mm. thing about tenting your house for termites is if there's someone living in the walls, they will die. So in case you're ever Damn. wondering, like, oh, maybe there's someone in my walls. Fumigate them out. See you later. Yeah. That is a real like thing that happens Dude, i know and i keep it keeps i keep coming up on my tiktok for you pages it's mm -hmm. called like not what's it what's it called squatters like, squatters but they're calling it like frogging on tiktok i don't know what that means oh i haven't seen that yeah that's crazy i yeah. saw something on tiktok that i want to know what you have what you think about but also we can recap first is there anything interesting that's happened in the past week do we talk should we talk about thanksgiving thanksgiving is coming up this is our thanksgiving episode Thanksgiving's yeah, one of my favorite well, holidays. I'm actually really excited. Well, I'm, I'm anyway. So if you don't know, <laughs> sorry, when you fumigate. You have to pack up all of your food. Yeah. Which for a normal human, maybe that's not much, but for a baking human, that is all of my sprinkles. That is all of my chocolate melts. That is all of my cake supplies. That's all of my food coloring. That is all of my spices. That is freaking everything. You have mm -hmm. to pack it all up. Because otherwise you'll eat it and die. Yeah, otherwise the fumigation will go into it. And you know who I keep finding just back like Ludwig has a whole box of Japanese protein bars downstairs that if I didn't yeah. find them. And I saw him tweet that. He's like really passionate about them or something. He just loves Japan. Yeah. He, <laughs> he loves it. But like if I like, oh, 
hey, you want to kill your spouse? Just leave their food in when it gets fumigated. And then they will like, if I did not grab those protein bars and left them downstairs, then he will pee pee poof downstairs one day, eat a protein bar, die. I did. Not like actually die, right? Like you're not actually. Maybe. I don't die. know. I don't think he would die. Maybe. Maybe uh, yeah, it's probably not good for you, but I don't think he would die. That would be crazy. I think he might die. It'd be a crazy way to go. Anyway, but so it's know. really stressful because I just keep thinking I'm gonna leave something and like I mean I guess you can always buy a new one. But it's just stressful. Like, oh you have to take all your vitamins. I have vitamins right here. Didn't know. Mm -hmm. Gotta pack those up. Like it's just like it's just so your toothpaste stressful. Your toothpaste, your toothbrush, your pads, your tampons, because you don't want the chemicals to soak into pads and tampons. Oh, ew. Interesting. It's a lot of freaking work. Yeah, that's a lot. There's a lot of things to think about. I would not like that. Luckily, I live in a tiny house. I don't have all that many things. So I feel like it wouldn't be that bad. But I don't need to feel And I also have to pack for Thanksgiving. And it's also not just me. It's three animals. Mm -hmm. I have to drive all alone. <laughs> With all of them. With all of them. They love Thanksgiving. And Durs has a cardiologist appointment tomorrow because he has a heart murmur, I guess. They're like children. It's, it's really stressful. I'm barely staying afloat, but it's fine. How was your week? Fine. <laughs> Speaking of children, I hung out with a bunch of them yesterday. I went to a dinner with like a bunch of my family. So I saw a lot of little children. And they're running oh, yeah, around. Is your and family in town right now? Uh, they will be. They're like a few hours away right now. And then my direct fam family is coming here. But um, yeah, I went to see some of my like cousins and second cousins and whatever. There's a lot of kids and they're very crazy. They run around and they scream a lot. Um, I told my stream today, I one of them, they're all like really into Mr. Beast. That's like what's cool nowadays for kids. They love Mr. Beast. They had a book. It was like, 2024 world records and it was just mr beast uh -huh. on the cover um so i'm like trying to befriend these children like that are my second cousins that i just don't they don't yeah. really know who i am i, I kind of know who they are we we don't know each other very well so You're i'm like, like trying to, be cool. to call mr beast yeah I, okay i didn't say that but i basically said that i was trying to be cool i was trying to be friends with them and i was like is that mr beast book and he's like yeah i love mr beast and i was like i know him and he just like looked at me and then ran away i was like oh okay well <laughs> i Tried really yeah. hard to like relate to you guys and like be cool, but I guess they don't care that I know Mr. Beast. What would you have done if he was like, call him? I'd be like, oh yeah, no, we're not friends like that. <laughs> I'd be like, I don't think, I don't think you would pick up. I don't think that's a good. You're idea. like, I can try to call Carl, I guess. <laughs> I would change Lud's contact name to Mr. Beast in my phone. I would call Ludwig, and I'd be like, that's genius. Lud, just like pretend like you're Mr. Beast really quick. These kids yeah. help him. He'd do great. Yeah, he would actually do really good. That's a yeah. good move. Next time. Uh, okay. <laughs> Next time I'll, right. I'll blatantly lie to the children and I'll say that it's Mr. Beast on the phone. As he's actually just Ludwig, who's just less famous, so they don't care. <laughs> Dude, I got so humbled. So Jody had this dream of going to Rainforest Cafe. Okay. And so it's not that she great. Rent, she rents a minivan. We all we all meet at the offline TV house. We load up in the minivan. We go to Rainforest Cafe, which is an hour drive away. She doesn't have a reservation. She, she rented a minivan to go to Rainforest Cafe and she didn't make a reservation. That's so funny. That's crazy. Uh, she was like, we need to save Rainforest Cafe. It turns out they don't need saving at this location. They're popping. But it's fine because it gave us time to go to Build-A-Bear. Um, so we go to Build-A-Bear, whatever. We go to Thanks. Rainforest Cafe. The food is awful. Yeah, it's it's just not good. It's yeah. Not. Um, but their drinks are amazing. I've only gotten beer there. <laughs> so oh, do, do they have like cocktails? What a mistake. Yeah, they have like cocktails oh. they, and they're so good. And they're like $14 and you get a free cup with them. Didn't know that. Yeah. Interesting. So I want to I want to do a, a Rainforest Cafe bar crawl. Oh, that's really aggressive because there's like one per state. Like that's crazy. Yeah, it's more just like <coughs> you could go not to Rainforest hit... Cafe, stay in Rainforest Cafe. I don't think you could hit two in a night. No, I don't. Think I don't so know. Either. You'd have to ask like Ted and Eddie. Ted might know. 
but it was it was a really great experience besides turns out rainforest cafe's food is so incredibly mid yeah that's tragic it's like it's like olive garden level food but it has but like more than just italian oh it's so worse really yeah olive garden's pretty bad (laughs) i love olive garden i love olive garden because i think it's funny and i love the the concept i don't love their food at all i like it i don't Wow, you're not like family it. when you're But here, I did have I'll a bellini at Olive Garden and it was pretty good. So I'll give them that. A peach bellini. But I mostly thought it was funny that she put the effort into renting a minivan and then forgot to make that the reservation. That is so funny. But it all worked out. It worked out great. It was fun. Cute. It was a, it was it was a good time. What did you do this weekend? This weekend. Oh my god, mm-hmm. it's Monday. Um I I went well. I went to see my family. Um, I don't think I did anything. I didn't go out this weekend, so I don't have any crazy stories. I didn't get hit on by swingers. I didn't get hit on by bisexual women. Um, so none of that. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, that's all. <laughs> I'm just working. Okay, yeah, for sure. We're like living our best lives and stuff. Yeah, for sure. We're living our best lives. Cutie's working. She's drowning. She's drowning. She's always I'm drowning. So drowning. Yeah. I'm bad, bad right now. You want to know how many texts I have? Guess. 84. 141. Dude, how do you. How, Those are ones like, that I need to reply to. Do you want to know how many Discord messages I have that I need to reply to? Over 200. Only 56. Dude. When the, about 16 what's the, what's the oldest. What's the oldest text message in those 141 that you are supposed to reply to? Um, I need to reply to one. This is the oldest one. October 26th. You're backed up a month in yeah. text messages? Yeah. How do you even reply at that point? What do you say? Like, hey, sorry, I, just, I, I, I usually was showering. say so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, my socks needed folding. No, I usually just say like, I'm so sorry. Time just got away from me. I've been so disgustingly busy because I have been. And yeah. I want to give people like a sincere reply, and I just don't have time. So I like, so I mark it as unread so I can get to it later. That is and crazy. Give them the reply they deserve. Yeah. But I just don't have any time. That's really sad and really overwhelming. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm fine. I'm in the middle of planning the Christmas concert, and I haven't even been able to ask people to join it. Hey, did you tweeted? You're like, who wants to do this? I do that every. Okay, this is an interesting thing. I want your opinion. So the point of the Christmas concert is to get streamers that you don't typically see as singers performing. Because if you get, okay. if we get a bunch of music streamers. Then it's just boring. It's a music streamer and, concert. Well, no one wants to follow that. Like oh. TJ is kind of the exception because he helps, you know, he's a professional musician and he performs and he's our backup uh, pianist. Mm-hmm. And so when he performs, fuck the person that has to follow him up. Yeah. Like, you know, and imagine if we get all musicians like Twitch music streamers. Yeah freaking like i'm not following that I, i'm not i don't want to do that like it's for fun it's supposed to be like lighthearted. so yeah. i always feel bad because whenever i tweet that i i, I want to like put in it like non-music streamers that want to like right which you could do know. that yeah but yeah i, could. I don't know i just feel bad but well, i saw I a ton of people so replied to that and said that, and said that they my... wanted to do that yeah there are a lot Prezzo. of people but there's a lot of people that i don't know which always scares me Wait, as sad as it is, like sometimes I tweet those things just to see if there's people that I do know that want to be like right. I just gauge interest. And every once in a while, if someone's like on the outer circle, like I don't know them very well, but I like know they're like safe, then I can like pick them from there. But mm. it's 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 scary as a content creator because sometimes you'll invite somebody to something that you don't know anything about, and then turns out they're canceled because they murdered yeah. someone, and you're like, you're Whoa. you're nicer than it's cool that you're like willing to <laughs> well i've burned to i've learned that bring new people that. in i i simply won't <laughs> i'm just like yeah it's not worth not worth the risk yeah. sorry yeah i understand but that's what i'm in the middle of right now i haven't been able when, to make an announcement video when is it like the 17th 
It's the 16th. The 16th. Yeah, that's coming up. I know. They're going to have like 10 days to practice their songs. I know. I know. It's my goal. It's my goal to work on it. Um, Did you figure out what song you're singing? Are you singing that Taylor Swift song? Dude, it's so hard. Oh. Sad. Have you heard it? Yes, I listened to it after you brought it up. It's hard. What about the one that goes, this is the Christmas song, it's on till January. Do you think that counts as a Christmas song? That's Lover. It is? That's that's arguably harder. Oh, that's dumb then. Don't sing Lover. That doesn't make sense. I thought it was, a, I thought it was like more Christmassy. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, never mind. Um, have you seen... Wait, did we talk about this last week? Did we talk about Travis Kelsey's tweets that are resurfacing? No. Do you No, you texted me about them. Oh, that's right. I shouldn't have. I should have waited. Travis Kelsey's old tweets are resurfacing, which if you hear me say that, you're probably like, uh-oh. Right? Because that sounds like bad. Yeah. Like old tweets are resurfacing. That's like nightmare fuel. But his old tweets are just like from 2010. And they'll put like comparisons of Taylor Swift like tweeting her song lyrics that are all like. Just you were the summer and, and I was yeah. the rain and you saved my life. And then Travis Kelsey the same day is like, I just gave a squirrel a piece of bread. I didn't know they liked bread like that. Ha ha. Insane. Like hashtag <laughs> bread. <laughs> and like, like every word is spelled wrong. Yeah. All the words are spelled wrong. That's what I sent that tweet to Cutie and she thought he was talking about Squirtle, the Pokemon, because Cutie's dyslexic. And I was like, I think he is also dyslexic because he spelled squirrel super, super wrong. Um, and all of yeah, his old tweets be. are surfacing where he's just like a goofy, a goofy dude. And he's just like, I love cinnamon rolls. Hashtag LOL. Hashtag Chipotle. <laughs> it's nice. I, it's, I think it's nice. I saw this. Um, I saw this interview. It's super cute. I'm, I'm a little parasocial. I will admit, you know, but you know, at least it's, she's just a little. I'm a little parasocial. It's little it's bit. for my own entertainment. It's less, which sounds bad. But I'm not the parasocial that like I would never like sit out of a hotel room or like. Right. Well, that's just. Yeah. Harassment. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a stalker. OK. Yeah. I just like I just I'm, like I see these things and I'm like, that's so cute. Um, But there was this interview that Taylor did with uh, uh, Jimmy Fallon, where she was talking about like when she first moved to New York, she was so excited. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, it was like, oh, I'm so excited about this and blah, blah, blah. And, and she's like, and I hate those people on the planet that just like be little oh. people for being excited. Like, oh, this. you're so yeah. cute, you know? And then Travis Kelsey in an interview was like, yeah, like since joining the Chiefs, whenever I get on the bus, I'm so excited. Like I'm so did it. And it's just like someone like someone like put in the comments or the title was like same people, different font. And it was, it was kind of cute. That was cute. Yeah, they're they're gonna be together forever, and I'm really happy for them. Yeah, they are so sweet. So the the most parasocial thing came out of my mouth, and sorry, commenters, for what is gonna what this is. I you know I have spent a lot of time thinking about this, and I can't believe this came out of my mouth. But <laughs> the Eagles and the Chiefs are playing today. Yeah, that's right? drama, actually. The context, because yeah, Taylor Swift has been an Eagles fan for a really long time. Travis Kelsey is on the Chiefs. Well, and her brother pays, plays for the Eagles. Or, oh, my no, God. Travis Kelsey's brother plays for the Eagles. Oh, that's, yeah, that's less drama then. It's fine. Yeah, but, but the whole thing was, is because her dad used to be an Eagle, or used to be an Eagles fan, but now there's, like, jokes that he's a Kansas City fan. But, the, so the parents were going to tonight's game, and Taylor was supposed to go too, but obviously... There's awful things that happened in Brazil. If you don't know, um, the first concert in Brazil of Taylor's there, um, it was, there's a heat wave in Brazil mm. and they closed the stadium has these big like windows that are like vents and they closed all of them to prevent people from like sitting outside and looking in. They also didn't allow you to bring in water. Mm -hmm. And so it got up to 140 degrees inside the venue. Yeah. Oh there's my this God. Video, there's this video of Taylor during uh, the the Evermore set where she's wearing that big flowy dress where she turns and you can just see like soaked down to her hip sweat. Like she is not Damn. well. I saw videos like, of her like hyperventilating. Yeah. Um. um but because of 
the heat and them not allowing you to bring in water and them only selling water bottles this big for six dollars and they weren't accessible yeah uh, a fan died at no i thought the fan died before the concert in the venue no yeah that's i thought it was i thought it happened before the con died like from heat stroke yeah heat exhaustion that turned into cardiac arrest oh my god yeah how is she like gonna recover from that that's really bad yeah that's insane um, i didn't know that it happened at her concert yeah and so so awful um and uh how do i articulate this um essentially yeah just awful 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 situation the venue is very much so at fault this wasn't like this was not like you know astro world situation where the singer is at fault because even during the concert the fans were like chanting water and taylor started like saying get them water like help mm -hmm. get them water and like during her song she would stop singing and say help get them water and like she she grabbed a water bottle from her security took a sip of it put the lid on and threw it to the audience like she, she said row she was like water row three and then no one was going over there so she grabbed water i don't think she took a sip of it actually i don't remember but like it was open and she put the lid on and threw it to him like during oh God, her I can't believe concert she died at yeah the concert. dude i don't uh yeah that i don't know yeah. how yeah just tragic just tragic and so then they postponed the concert the next day uh, so it was supposed to be like uh, Sunday, Saturday, Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Right. So they postponed the Saturday show uh, to Monday, which is today, uh, due to the heat, uh, mm -hmm. which as they should. Um, and then the Sunday show yesterday, they had the air open. They had water available, like they had water bottles for free available. They had fans out. Um, they were doing as much as they could. Right. Um, and then. Uh, and then today, the audacity of Swifties, Swifty, Swifties out there, you, there was this trending idea, um, cause essentially the venue's at fault, but a lot of Swifties wanted to make a statement, uh, after, you know, when she, uh, sings on the piano uh champagne problems and then she gets that 10 minute long ovation. Mm -hmm. So everyone was like. Like they were like this trending idea of like, oh, let's all be quiet and have a moment of silence for Anna. Anna is the, the uh, woman who passed away. And like everyone's like, uh, number one, that's like awful because how is like Taylor going to like feel, you know, like Taylor from everything you've seen about Taylor, she seems like a very empathetic person. Like mm -hmm. even her statement about the death was very empathetic that the next day she's saying, or like the surprise song, the day after the canceled show, she sang um, bigger than the whole sky, which is essentially about someone passing away. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just like, it was just like gut wrenching and it's really sad and it's awful. And, and then like to like, it kind of like puts the blame on to Taylor a little bit in that situation where it's like, I Oh, let's be quiet. It's like a, Instead kid of, it was like 20 she was like 23 i just 23 she looked it up a 23 year old died from like heat at a, that is just like it was 140 degrees that's insane. there are multiple people that passed out like it was awful yeah that's insane that's why um, are they still doing shows i don't i don't understand yeah i don't know i don't know um but then but then luckily well Luckily, they didn't do it. So that didn't happen tonight. It was supposed to happen tonight. But the awful thing about all this is all these like Swifties are like rumbling about this I idea and holding up a sign that says like justice for Anna in order to put pressure on the venue, which, yes, there needs to be pressure on the venue. But I, I promise you and I swear to God, based on all efforts that Taylor has ever made in her entire career, she will make sure that venue is like that they can do something. I, you know what I'm saying like, I mean, it's so shitty to like cancel stuff because people people like travel for it, right? Like people book yeah. Air Airbnbs and hotels and, and whatever. So like canceling is so shitty, but I can't imagine doing shows at that venue after someone died there. I don't know. Yeah, me neither. That's crazy. Man, um, I thought, I really, I really thought she died before the concert. I can't believe she died at no. the concert. That's awful. But the awful thing was her family, Anna, Anna's family, the family of the girl who passed away, they came out with this statement that they were like, hello, uh, Swifties, do not do this. Like we are in the middle of grieving. We don't want like, like 
we don't want this big thing like we just are mm. we're trying to process like stop and it's like god damn it like way to like i get it was like a good it was a good idea to try to get justice for the situation but it's like this poor family is grieving about this awful thing and it's like it's kind of just like uh, i don't know it's just such a sad thing that they have to come out of their grieving to like say something mm -hmm. it's just sad it's just an awful situation overall i understand that it came with good intentions but it just it's just so sad like what it's I don't know what are you supposed to do like it's just so awful but tonight uh tonight she had the Saturday show essentially so the people with the tickets for Saturday came to Monday show but all of this means that um she missed the the Eagles the Eagles Chiefs game mm. that's a lot of lore for I saw TikTok today about that now the Chiefs are gonna lose because really? because she's not there and now no that's way. that's a lot of lore that i wasn't expecting to receive yeah about you didn't know that. why Let she's see. not Let's there see what the score is kansas city chiefs oh oh they're winning Hooray! it's the third quarter and the eagles are seven and the chiefs are 17 they're fine she did sing me today though she sang I don't care who wins that game. Yeah. As long no. as everybody's happy. Surely everyone will be happy no matter who wins. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it works usually. Yeah. I love sports. Um I love sports. I saw a TikTok today that I want I want your uh your input on. Cause it's uh -huh. kind of You crazy. know we've had the most lackadaisical, I don't even know what that word means, but I'm using it. Lackadaisical week, except for lackadaisical means like willy nilly. I think, which we haven't had. So I don't know why I'm saying any of this because I had a really busy week. I'm not really sure about your week because I barely talked to you. I only called you when I was driving. But and it's, anyway, all of this to say, we had an <laughs> uneventful week for speaking on a podcast for the sake of most of our topics, which I have another topic tonight of, I saw this TikTok. <laughs> okay. Wow. That was a crazy lead up to say that. Yes. You know, we've had an uneventful week when we were talking about the TikToks that we've seen. Yes. That sentence that I just says, m said makes me, uh, reminds me of that Ariana Grande interview with like Abigail Breslin when she was like, Ariana Grande is like, I want to see what you just said written on paper. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen that. That's funny. Oh uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. No, Go I on. mean, there's, we've had a, we've had a relatively, I don't know, like a drama free week, I guess just a normal work week. One of those. Anyway, I saw this I TikTok. so much last week. I'm not kidding you. Yeah. That is, you've had a lot going on. Um, I saw this TikTok. I think before, if I wouldn't have spent so much time in LA last year, I would not have believed that this was a real thing <laughs> that okay. happened. Um, so it's a TikTok of this girl and she's talking about how she went to visit LA. She's, she's a TikToker. It's like what she does. And um, she got on Raya when she got to LA. Raya, for those of you who don't know, is a dating app uh, for like celebrities. You, you have to be like, people have to vouch for you to get accepted onto Raya. And then there's like a, a committee or something that like looks well, looks into you essentially and essentially it's become very pay to win and you just have to be hot oh and you have to pay a monthly subscription oh okay yeah. pay to win anyway. raya you get on there it's it's like tinder except for hot famous people mm -hmm. yeah so this girl went to la and she got on raya when she got to la and then she found a an ex disney channel star on raya which is like classic, right? There's a ton of them. In is LA. it the one whose party we went to? No, it is not. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Actually, I guess crazy. it could be. You shouldn't say his name. So it could be a, a guy, ex Disney Channel star. And they match on Raya and then they go on a date. And he picks her up from her Airbnb or whatever. And he picks her up for this date in like a super beat up Toyota Corolla. And okay. she was like, I was surprised, but like, I don't care. Whatever. Like, it's just his car. So, like, picks her up from that day or from, from there in a shitty Toyota Corolla and then drives her to a Chili's, like, because they're getting dinner. That's so sick. And she was like, okay, like, interesting. Like, I, like, I'm surprised that we're going here, but also that's fine. Because, like, you look at his, on his Instagram, it's just like, he's just like a, a rich dude, right? So, like, he's, got it, he's got it going on. Um, yeah, but the 
picked her up in a Toyota Corolla, took her to, to a Chili's. Um, and so she was okay. like, okay, whatever. Maybe he's trying to make sure she's not materialistic. Okay. Interesting that you say that. <laughs> so then they yeah. walk in the Chili's and he's like, is this fine? And she's like, yeah, cool. I love Chili's. Um, and he was like, I rented out the Chili's for us. <laughs> he was like, he was That's like sick he was like i rented out the chilies for us like it's our private chilies <laughs> like, like for us to have dinner um and you pass the test and she was like what <laughs> and he was like yeah like when i go on these dates like sometimes girls don't get past the corolla and like you passed that test because she like didn't complain about his car and then they went into the chilies and he was like you passed this test too this test Who too. Who fails because, these tests? I don't know. If girls are just like, ooh, never mind. Like, I, I would like for you to turn around now. I don't know. No, I guess it's fair. But he's like, some people yeah. don't pass this test. Um, and then he was like, and you pass the, the Chili's test because you didn't care that you're eating at a Chili's. And then now let's they, get married. Yeah, they ate at the private Chili's. And then at the, and he said, like, at dinner, he was like, I do this because. Like people, people know who I am and then expect me to be rich and like expect me to do like nice, expensive things. And I can do those things, but like, I don't want people to, to want to date me for them. Okay. Valid. Whatever. Okay. So then at the end of the date, he was like, do you want to, I have a private jet. (laughs) Classic. What the f- He was like, he was like, I have a private jet. Do you want to go on a ride in my private jet and just like go over the city? Or do you want to just like go to the park? And go for a walk. I'd be like, no, I'm chill. Okay, well, of course you would because you hate planes. But I feel like if like, people don't hate planes and they're, someone's like, you want to go on a private jet around the city, they'd probably be like, that's sick. Yeah, right? So anyway, he's like, do you want to go on my jet just like around the city? This is another test. This is another test. Okay. Sure. Or do you want to go for a walk she at this failed, park? She? And she was like, you actually have a private jet? And he was like, yeah, like I can just call it whenever like launch pads over here, whatever they call it, like is going to pick us up over here. And she was like, yeah, like, I want to do that. That's crazy. Like, that's so cool. And then he was like, I'm feeling sick. <laughs> and he was like, I have to go. She failed. <laughs> he was like, I'm feeling sick. I have to go home. And then he just, like, left. Or I, maybe he, like, took her home. I don't know. Or if he called her a cab. I don't know. But um, the date ended there. So She failed. Yeah, she got home, and then she was like, I guess that was another test that I failed. But I'm going to be honest, one test, in my opinion, I want to know your opinion. In my opinion, uh-huh. one test is plenty. <laughs> you get, I, the one, you can test someone one time, and I feel like you can kind of get a vibe. You don't need to constantly test them throughout the night, and then leave <sighs> when they fail for the, for like, when they fail after three goes. That's dumb. It does suck that, like, he was like, by the way, I rented the chilies and you seem like a chill ass viber. And then, like, it makes it feel like he's opened, like, Beast Library where he's like, come on in, I made this for you. Yeah. And then he's like, never mind, you can't read more than 10 books. Like, he already told her. Like, <laughs> like you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like, like she you, already if, passed. Okay, if you, yeah. She yeah. already passed. And so it's. Sh- I don't know. That's interesting. Because imagine, imagine he didn't rent out the whole Chili's and it's just a dinner at Chili's. Okay. Their dinner at Chili's. He hasn't told her it's a test. Like freaking Martha and Bob are sitting next to them on the other table. And then at the end of dinner, he's like, do you want to go to the park or do you want to go to private jet? No matter what, she's going to say private jet. Right. The other thing about these she's tests gonna fail is that no matter they're, what. they're different. The first I two. I wouldn't fail. Like, okay, you're right. But that's, <laughs> that's be in love. not. Who that's is he? Right. Um, Why do I? <laughs> those tests are not the same because the, the first two are just like, is she going to be a bitch and come out and be like, this isn't good enough, right? Which is like, which is crazy if you if you did that on a first date and you're just like, there's this probably is not people it. that do that. Okay, well, the third test, the private jet or walk in the park test, is like setting her up for failure. Like that's like, she should know. Here's he's he's like offering her these two things. One of them obviously way cooler. <laughs> than the other it's a trap like that's a trap test the other ones are just like is she an is she like a a loud mean person like is she gonna be mean to me (laughs) there's an argument where it's like okay maybe she's just being nice maybe she's just being nice because like even if i was on the worst day ever they like pick me up in this ugly car and i'm I'm like "Uh oh they're not gonna gonna say anything right i'm not gonna say anything and they're like let's go to murder park i'd be like okay i guess so 
But I think I don't. Yeah. I don't think it's fair to just be like, oh, you're definitely too materialistic for me then. If you ask someone who's never been on a private jet, if they want to go on a on your see your private jet or well, if they'd rather walk around the block. I don't think it's fair because he like because he kind of uh, waved the flag in her face where he's like, right. yeah, I can do nice things. Like, yeah, I got you this whole Chili's, bitch. Like, look at my Chili's. And then to be like, no, now you ask for too much, you know? Right, yeah. You can't, like, give and then expect that they're, like, I don't know. But um, she also, like, I feel like she should have known that was a test based on, like, he's being weird and cringe about doing this test anyway. True. But also, such a red flag and happy she dodged that bullet because I guarantee he would do that for years if this is his mental, you know? Like, right, I get I get doing it because I'm sure there are times he pulls up in that Corolla and there are girls that are like, yuck. But, mm -hmm. okay, was there anyone in the comments that, like, called out who it was? No. No, I didn't look really? at that many comments, to be honest, but... Come on! I didn't see anything at the at the top. Like, this was They blank. always figure it out. They, they, maybe they know. I don't know. But I, before I spent any time in LA, I would have been like, okay, fake story, like good fake story. But I believe that that happened. <laughs> X, X I Disney Channel happened. star. Yeah, I believe it. I've met enough to where I'm like, yeah, I believe it. Raya is so funny. Raya is so funny because, so Taylor is on Raya or she was on Raya. Yeah. And, uh, Essentially, she she just knew someone and that person wasn't famous or anything either. They were just hot. And they mm -hmm. so they vouched for Taylor and then she gets the invite because Taylor's also hot. Um, and and that's why I was like, oh, so you don't actually have to be famous. She's like, no, it's changed. You just have to be hot. But it's like a twenty dollar a month fee to Ugh. stay on Raya. Yeah. And you only get like five swipes a day or something ridiculous. And then you have to pay for more swipes, which is that's just like so I'm stupid. trying to find the love of my life. I, I need tried more to than get five swipes. I tried to get on Raya. Remember that? That was yeah, and you were like Hassan, back. get me on Raya, and he was like, "My name's Hassan." Yeah, that's, that's what, what he says. says. And He's like a Pokemon. I didn't get on Raya. You're like Hassan, let me play basketball. He's like, "My name's Hassan." Yeah, and then I didn't play basketball. Yeah, um, just fake know. empty promises all the time. Um, <laughs> just says his name. I, a Pokemon. <laughs> no, I did try to get on Raya a while back. I I did not make it on there. I guess it's it's not it's not a terrible thing, but it would have been good stories no. for the for it sure. would have been so fun. But yeah. then, so Taylor's on Raya and she's at my house one time and I'm like, let's play Raya. It's like, for me, it's like playing Tinder. It's just like interested to see like who the heck is on here? What are their mm -hmm. bios? Like, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so we're in the living room and we're trying to airplay it to the, so one thing you can't do, you cannot screen record on Raya. Trauma. It has That's something valid. in it. And you get, vi you get a violation. And if you get three violations, you get banned from Raya. I think you should have more than... Or I think you should have less than three violations. Well, some you don't know sometimes. And it, you can only screen. You can only like you go. So you're Raya's open, right? And um, and you, you Raya's open. You scroll down and you push record. And then Im immediately a thing pops up. That's like, this is a mm -hmm. like, this is a violation. Oh, so oh, you can't, oh. you, don't, you didn't record anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it immediately shuts it down. But, and we knew that and we're like, oh, that's fine. But let's airplay it to the tv so we can both sit here and, and watch it you know <laughs> yeah so we we get the airplay set up which was a pain in the ass and then as soon as we airplay it a violation pops up oh god because like, it counts airplaying as like yeah yeah and so instead we pulled raya up on her phone we airplayed my phone to the tv with my camera app open and we set it up like this that's so excessive why don't you just well actually i guess if, it, if they were both sitting fun. there yeah that's yeah it works it was just it was like the her phone was in my hand and then it was right here and we were just scrolling through and it was mostly just like like we didn't i didn't see any ex disney stars or anything i think i saw a few like david dobrik people mm -hmm. um but no like nothing no crazy. nothing like everyone else was just like just like a typical hot la guy so it was like whatever but it was funny because um because taylor taylor knows what she freaking likes like when it comes like she likes nice things she likes mm -hmm nice experiences like she like if he pulled up in a corolla taylor is nice enough that she would never say anything but i know in the back of her mind she'd be like this bitch you know like <laughs> like i i just yeah. know, i know taylor um yeah. but it, it was it was so funny so we, we bought more swipes because we were just like enjoying you know enjoying the night it was like funny um just to, like see all these people and, and their bios are just so funny because it's like my like my dad's the owner of toaster strudel and you're like
you know like that's it's crazy in their bio what is their bio just like yeah. they're like call to fame they're like so, well some is... of them are like fuck boys so some of them are like some of them are like nep nepo baby of exxon oil peace sign and you're like okay so they're like oh, self self-aware but like god. get over yourself Dude, like, oh yeah. my god i just got ooh, yeah that like made me yeah, but it was fun <laughs> It was funny because I was a uh, weird. We, we were trying to find her the love of her life, but it, it didn't work out. Yeah. But it, I, I do believe it based on Raya. Uh, but a lot of the people were just like very. There were like some ex like Love Island people. I don't know why I just started playing That's with my sick. arm fat. I shouldn't have done that. But yeah, there was ex Love Island people. <laughs> and then. Um, yeah, it was it was I mean, it was interesting overall, but. I think I just can't believe how much you have to pay for it. So she's she's not on Raya anymore. She's like, I, I'm not paying for that subscription fee. There are so many. There are so many reality shows on Netflix right now. And so, I bet so many of them are going to end up on on Raya. A lot of them are really messed up. It's actually I've watched quite a few of them. And it's one of the things that I like genuinely feel guilty about. Is watching really? Netflix reality shows because I yeah, because I think they're so. Like they just exploit people so hard and I, I think they traumatize people so hard and i think that i think the people that go on there are like i don't know it's just it's just bad for humanity and i feel guilty that i contribute to the production of those shows by, by watching it. them by consuming them well i found out something even more awful so i i was at i was at this party and i was talking to someone that was like uh invited to do like love island or something like that i was like mm -hmm. oh that's crazy and i don't know if it was for the record it was like for the record of quoting me it was blank reality tv show it wasn't right. love island I one used of them there's love so island many. as they an example the yeah yeah they all they're all the same but in their contract and apparently this is very normal in their contract was like hey now that you're on this show moving forward any money you make for appearances, any money you make uh, on subscriptions, any money you make on YouTube, any money you make on any social media, we now get 20% of because we made you. We're the only reason you have that following. Wow. Isn't that crazy? I did not Which makes sense because like, they sell their Think souls. of how many people from like The Bachelor that have like a following now that, you know, they had like a thousand followers and now they have 400,000 followers and it's all, and now they get all these brand deals and everything like that. So they have to like pay ABC a percentage or whatever wow is that so, so like insidious and gross yeah. yeah that's crazy and it's like no it's one not just so the dating money. shows oh it's my like God. it's like like even like nailed it like the baking shows can do it and even like 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 pretty much all reality tv does this like i wonder if they learned this from like jersey shore like we watched jersey shore mm -hmm. and like all of those people have like a big following now that they would not have had if they would have never gone on jersey shore right. and i'm curious if like if mtv has that same deal or if everyone I, learned from mtv because i mean that was so old i doubt it yeah i doubt it too because That's... you know how I'm, a, I'm obsessed with playboy yeah so i learned uh i learned girls next door was a show that they had in the early 2000s it was hugh hefner and his three girlfriends he had his main girlfriend that was holly madison and then he had uh kendra and oh god i'm forgetting her name um Ooh, I'm so sorry. That makes me feel bad. Um, uh, I just have to Google it because I'll feel bad. Uh, Madison and Bridget. Yeah. Holly, Bridget, and Kendra. And they were like his three girlfriends and blah, blah, blah. And they had this show called Girls Next Door. And I think it was on VH1, if I'm correct. And it like saved the channel. It was either on MTV or VH1, one, one of those. And it just like saved their freaking network. Because this is the same time that like Simple Life is on. Like the ditzy blonde is just crushing it. And it's such it's such a fascinating thing to look at this old man with three hot women and just be like, what the right. hell is going on there, right? Yeah. And so you watch this reality t TV show where there's just hot women and they're taking their clothes off and blah, blah, blah. And that's the crazy thing is uh, I reading Holly Madison's book uh, is that in the TV show, they would like change their clothes and it'd be censored or it'd be cut out. But then they had one behind a paywall that you could watch that would just show them naked when they were changing or during photo shoots or whatever. But none of the women were making money off of that. Who is making money? Hugh. Well, Playboy, like, Inc. was making money off of it. Wait, so what did they get? Nothing? They, so, so what happens, 
when when you became a when you became a Hugh Hefner girlfriend, essentially, you um back in like you know the nineties. First, it was like he has usually there were just there used to be just one girlfriend, and then late night like early or probably mid to late nineties is when all of a sudden there are multiple girlfriends and like he would go out with this like harem of women because it would stir up publicity. And it was like, Oh my gosh, this 80 year old is out at a club with 12 hot blondes. Like, and all of a sudden people are talking about playboy again. Cause there's nothing sexy about an old man in silk pajamas, but there is something sexy about like, Oh my gosh, how the hell is he getting those? Turns out he's getting them with a lot of like uh, insidious behavior. Uh, however, Regardless of that, which that's a whole other episode we could talk about someday is how the behind the scenes of Playboy is just like uh, disgusting. But um, anyway, so essentially what would happen is there was like eight bedrooms or something like that that were open to the girls. And then there was girlfriend number one and she always shared the room with Hugh Hefner. Um, what a dream. And he had a big bedroom. And when you you would like kind of like work your way up in a bit of a hierarchy situation where Holly Madison describes it in her book as the first time she got invited to like go clubbing with the girls. She was friends with one of the girlfriends and they were like, let's go clubbing. And they all go on a club night. Holly gets invited. And then that is also sex night. So every Thursday they go to the she club and tell then they... her that. Nope. Okay. So this is where it gets really dark. How old so, is she? uh, I want to say she was like 20 years. No, 21. She was 21, I think. Okay. Uh, but regardless, like this was before uh, she got like new boobs from Hugh. She got like nose job from Hugh. So she's like very fresh and young, like, you know, new to Hollywood. She like, I guess she grew up a fan of Playboy and she tried to uh, get recruited because Playboy used to do this thing where they would go around uh, cities and find the next Playboy and right. you would go in a bus and you'd try. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But anyway. So she gets invited because she worked at Hooters and like a friend of a friend and she would go to the the mansion parties and she gets invited to this club night. They go to the club night. They go back to the house and then they all the girls have to go up to the bedroom and essentially Hugh would lay in the middle of the bed and all the girls would make out with each other to try to like to make him horny. And then the friend she was with turns out it was almost like an MLM where they like no one wanted to fuck Hugh. So they'd bring in a new girl and they'd be like, hey, it's Holly's turn. And so then that was the night that that like Holly had Holly Madison had to have sex with Hugh Hefner. And it's like super dark and disgusting because it was all just like peer pressure and other girls like throwing her under the bus. So that so that's the start of her relationship with Hugh. So, yeah. So that was the first time they had sex. And then she was like invited to all the parties and stuff like that. And so then she was like, you know what, if I'm doing this then I'm going to do it. Like, so she went to Hugh and said, Hey, can I move in? Cause one of the girls had moved out recently. And he was like, yep. So when you moved in, you got a, an allowance, uh, because he didn't allow you to have outside jobs. So you'd get an allowance, but it was only for hair, makeup and clothes. Okay. Yeah. And oftentimes you could like convince him to pay for your new boobs or pay sure. for a nose job or pay for whatever. But essentially like you had to spend that money on, Hair, when was makeup, this? clothes. Wait, what years? This, this was early 2000s. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh my God. It sounds yeah. older. Okay. God. Yeah. Yeah. Awful. Um, and eventually, uh, the, I mean, Playboy was not making much money at this time. And, um, but the, the number one girlfriend would always get like a car and she would always get like nicer things and she'd get mm -hmm. more of an allowance. So it's kind of like this hierarchy where you'd want to like work your way up. Is he alive still? No. Nice. Yeah. He was an all, he missed the Me Too movement by like a year. And it's just like, it's actually tragic because there's a lot of women that probably deserve to speak out. Uh, While he was alive. But yeah. yeah. Uh, and so anyway, um, so eventually Holly becomes the number one girlfriend and Kendra and Bridget are like the only two that are really left. Um, and they sign this deal to be on girls next door, which is a reality TV show that's yeah. filmed at the mansion house. The girls <clears throat> did not get paid for the first like three seasons. Yeah. They just got allowances. For yep. Living there. They just, and, and it then, was just like, and there's not even, Hughes. is there even social media then? So they're not even getting like no. a platform. No. Dude. Yeah, they were getting nothing besides like Hugh's vague promise, because that was another reason the girls stuck around was because they would become a uh, playmate of the month. So they'd get the cover of the magazine 
And then that's when you get deals. But Hugh knew to like never, like at this point in early 2000s, he'd been doing it for so many years that he like just would not give Holly, Bridget or Kendra Playmate of the Month. He would not because he knew the second they got it is when they go over to a different magazine or whatever, you know, or a different Mm -hmm. this or their career takes off and they can do their own thing because it it would happen. It would be like a turn turn door and he learned it. And so he would use that as like a manipulation tactic to like not give it to them. So then they would stick around. So on the show, on the first season of the show, because if you get Playmate of the Month, you get paid $10,000, which is like fucking massive, right? Yeah. Um, And then if you get Playmate of the Year, you get like $100,000, which is crazy. Uh, Also, for the record, it's been a while since I've read this, so I might be misquoting some numbers and stuff like that, but I I hope I'm close enough to the reality here. Um, uh, But anyway, so on the first season of Girls Next Door, Hugh walks into the room and tells all three girls, like, I'm going to put you in the magazine finally, but Mm -hmm. they have to share it. So it's all three girls, they have Mm -hmm. to share it and like... And so like no one got like their bonus check or like it was like much smaller or whatever because they were sharing it. Like it was very manipulative and awful. And then there was like bobbleheads that were being sold. Like it was the number one show on TV networks at the time. Like it was so, so popular and these girls were making nothing. And so eventually, eventually Holly, like when they were in renegotiations for like the third season, Holly was like, she like argued because they had, they had like slot machines in vegas with their faces on it and someone right. asked Holly, i don't remember who they were like how are you making money off of this and she was like we're not and she then like it was whatever friend this was or mentor this was like really helped her figure that out and so she leveraged that and was like no we need money and so they, they finally got money for like a very minimal amount compared to like that show wouldn't exist if they weren't there but right. hugh always treated them as replaceable right. uh but then as soon as he did replace them so by season five uh, so Kendra apparently had like a secret boyfriend the whole time, which mm. a lot of the girls would. A lot of the girls, which it wasn't allowed, but a lot of the girls would have secret boyfriends uh, while they were getting their allowance, which was super not allowed. There was also a curfew when you lived in the Playmate house. So you had to be home by nine no matter what. Um, God. Yeah. And so it was just like, it was just awful and gross. But yeah, so none of them made any money off of that. Um but now I, th- I believe Holly and Bridget have a magazine. Holly's written two books. Uh, I mean, they're, they're was well all off of now. That, or not a magazine. Sorry, they have a podcast. Was all of that front facing when the show was going on? Like, did they, do people know that this is like, not that they weren't no. getting paid, but just that like they got allowance and they had a curfew and that they like lived in this house? Or did they just think like all the girls just wanted to live together? Like, it's so fun. Everybody's happy. That's what they thought because that's because Hugh had like insane PR. So they would do interviews and he would like he would like reprimand you if you've said something otherwise. If you even noted that you don't have sex with him or that you do have like he like you had to be coy about the bedroom because a girl that talks bluntly about the bedroom is a slut and playmates aren't sluts. They're like this. They're sex icons, right? They're not sluts. And so it's just mm. like it was just crazy. But yeah, people saw it as like and they would ask him because they'd travel in three. They'd be like, so do you all sleep together? And then like they would answer very coyly or whatever. Um, but yeah, people saw it as like, it was something that they all agreed to. It was something like they didn't right. see it as this insidious thing that it actually Ugh, was. That gives me yeah. anxiety for like shows now. Yeah. I know, I mean, I can't really think of anything like that in particular right now, but that makes me anxious. Well, it is crazy. It's just crazy because it's like these shows exist now and there's those contracts that will say, hey, no matter what you blow up, we have, we get a percentage of all deals you make, all money you make right. for the next whatever years. Like there, yeah. there are like, even if they were to, if your name is Bill and you get signed to go on freaking love is blind, I don't know, love is blind. And it says, I don't know if love and bread, but if they have that in their contract, then for the next 10 years, even if you were to stream on Twitch, you would owe them a percentage of your subscriptions. Right. Anything like anything online. Yeah, or yeah, anything with your likeness. <laughs> is that crazy? That is crazy. I do understand that being worth it for some people if they're not already making that kind of money and they like want the fame and they want to make money. Then, yeah. Then it's like, oh, twenty percent. That's fine. Like then I make so much money. It might be more than twenty percent, but um, yeah. that's yeah. But that's that's wild. Um, it's just so gross because it's like, I mean, I I don't know. It's so interesting because I guess like. Yes, you can put anybody on Love Island, right? So it's like if you yeah. don't take this deal, somebody else will. Right. I think I think reality TV is going to get canceled eventually. I think 
I don't know how yeah. that's going to happen or what it's going to look like, but I think eventually people are going to realize like, oh, this is really bad. <laughs> I think they'd be like, oh, this is really bad for people. I'm watching this show right now called it's married at first sight. I don't think it's called that. I think it's called something else, but it's that's the concept, right? Is they like get married at the altar and yeah. they have them consult before, during and like after the process with a pastor and a therapist or like a psychologist. And I was like, how do you how do they find those? Like how 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 is a psychologist who has a license comfortable doing this? Uh, on reality TV. I wonder if they're like, all actors. Is that allowed? Ma- yeah. Maybe. I guess. Yeah. Because if it's if if that's a real psychologist, like they should lose their license because that's, that's oh absolutely behavior. Well, there was. Do you see the plastic surgeon on TikTok that got her license revoked? No. There's Why? this plastic surgeon on TikTok that would like live stream operations, and she got her license revoked. Oh my god, that's crazy. Great content so though. Yeah. <laughs> that's so I would oh my god, that's so bad. That's yeah. Awful. Well <laughs> there's a there's also there's a guy that's a doctor that just got his license. Or no, he's not a doctor. He impersonates a doctor. He he takes TikTok videos in a hospital. He walks in there with like a gown and like a stethoscope and stuff. And like records videos of him giving medical advice like it, at the hospital, but he never gave it to people in person. He was just doing it on TikTok, and he's like, "My name's Dr. Kyle." And when oh it comes God. to mesophilioma, like, and he would like speak uh, stuff that he like learned on Google, but he would do it in a hospital. Like he would go there to film, and no one's gonna question at a hospital if you're wearing like doctor clothes, I guess. Um, and they just found out that he's that he's not a doctor and they're trying to figure out what to do with him because he's never that is so interesting. Yeah, because he's never like he's never given like a real medical patient doctor advice. That's illegal. Like you can't do that. But if you're if you're pretending to be a doctor on TikTok, like I don't think you can get charged for that. Like I don't I don't think anything can happen to you. Cause it's for entertainment purposes. Like, why? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know though. I don't know if right. that I don't know. We'll find out. I don't think they've decided Dude, yet. Dude, it will make laws so interesting. Yeah, it's all a mess. I I saw something interesting, and this will be our last topic before we hop over to the Patreon. But um, I didn't know this. And I saw this, and it's like a thing, which, okay, I love Phoebe Bridgers. Uh, I, I like her music. I didn't know she was in a band, which feels like silly that I didn't, I didn't know that. But she is. She's in. They're called Boy Genius, and I've actually listened to their songs before. But I always saw just like their three names, and I'm like, oh, this must be a collab. I didn't. I never came up on my Spotify as Boy Genius specifically, mm-hmm. so I was a little confused. Um, but uh, or maybe I just didn't. When it does come up as Boy Genius, I didn't realize it was Phoebe because it probably has come up on my for you or on like my Spotify mix or whatever. But anyway, at their concerts, they often like take off their shirts, like nipples out and everything. And then they like kiss Kitty? each other. Yeah. Oh. It's three girls. Um, which I believe yeah. they're all queer, but they all uh like they'll like take off their shirts on like the final song and like kiss each other and like lay on top of each other. And it's just like it's very like what like chaos, like what is happening? And I asked my chat about it today because I, I I've seen it all over TikTok recently that they're like, oh, blah, blah. And like, uh, like just people being like, oh, when you sit front row at Boy Genius, like sweaty emoji, like that, like it's like hot, you know. Mm-hmm. And but I don't think that's not why they do it. They don't do it to be hot. I had to ask my chat because I was like, I don't, I don't get this. I even went on Reddit and I was like, what are they? What is this? Like, is it a tradition? Like, is it like you know Taylor Swift? Like, you have the chance or whatever. Like, is it? A, is it? What did it start off as like funny? Take off your shirt. Like, what is it? And it was such an interesting explanation. The only one I've found and the only one I've been told, I have just never seen this before. was like, it was like, uh, no, they just love each other. Like they just love each other so much. And it's just like fun to kiss each other. And it's just fun to have like, to take off your shirt and like, you know, be crazy and and goofy and silly. And it's just like, it was just Hmm. so crazy because I wonder. Love each other. What do you mean? Oh, you and I? Yeah. Well, we're not queer, so I think that helps. Oh. Are they in a relationship? No. Oh. Phoebe Bridgers is apparently dating Bo Burnham. 
Huh. There's like picture photos of them like making out or like videos of them like making out or something, which cute couple. Very cool. Um Yeah, that's fun. But um but I guess Phoebe has talked in multiple interviews about being poly, but I don't think they're not in a relationship. It's more like like every interview where they've talked about why they do it. They're like, we're just friends and we just love each other. We just love it. And it's just fun to kiss. Hmm. OK. Yeah, I mean, you're not hurting anybody. Who cares? I guess. It is so <clears> interesting. <throat> because not for they're... me, though. I couldn't watch that. I, I, I couldn't like be there. I'd and get I'd uncomfortable. Be so uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, someone like on TikTok was like, my mom was standing next to me right during this moment. Like, yeah, that would suck. Um, yeah. But it's just interesting because like hearing or listening to um, there's a spider in the corner. I can't stop looking at Yay. it. Um, listening to like people's thoughts of like, oh, yeah, they just do it because it's fun and they love each other. And they're trying to like, I guess someone someone also said like, oh, they're trying to normalize just like making out with your friends. Because you love each other, like, normalize kissing. And it's like, yeah, that's... I don't really care to normalize making out. Is that... Really? Is there... Should I? Is there something to that? Is that... Like, I, I don't want to It's like you hug your friends. Anybody. Yeah. I don't want to make out with my friends <laughs> at all. I don't know. I don't, like, Hugging want to like, make out okay, with my friends. I don't know. I, I feel fine about it normalized. I'm fine with making out being reserved for romance. <laughs> I don't... I don't... I have no desire to make out with anybody else. Rude. Right here. Ye <laughs> neither do you we would never make out we could make out no we could not no Rude. we couldn't you we could not right. take, there's no world where we could take that seriously You're there's no mean. world okay all right you don't have She's... to be serious while making out they're just having fun you want to laugh in each other's faces while we're making out i don't know if i i don't know yes how do you not okay nah. all right we're gonna go to the patreon we're gonna talk about Wait. making out Okay, we're talking about making out. Anyway, all I have to say that was interesting, really quick before we go to the Patreon, is that they're just having fun, but then there's people that sexualize it, and I wonder how they feel about that. That's actually interesting. I want to have that conversation. Okay, we'll have it on the Patreon. Yeah. Also, guys, just so you know, it is time to farm your Thanksgiving drama. Don't farm it. But we are going to tweet out a form for you Go guys to fill out. Go out there and make some bad things happen. <laughs> yeah. If your family is Republican, ruckus. you tell them that, that vaccines are good. And Ask them where they were happens. on the 6th. Yeah, do it. Especially if you're related to Squeaks, because we're still not really sure. Um, But we're going to tweet out a form that's like, tell us your family drama that happened on Thanksgiving. So... Just keep in mind, we will be looking for that because everybody has family drama on Thanksgiving and I am excited to hear you guys' stories because Thanksgiving is fun. Happy Thanksgiving. Fun for that. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. This came out on Wednesday, but happy Thanksgiving. Oh, what are you thankful for? You should say that real quick. Stompy. Okay. What are you thankful um, for? Swift. I'm thankful for Swifty. Um... I am thankful. I am thankful. I'm thankful for all of our likers and subscribers. <laughs> That's really nice. But not our watchers, you lazy butts. Push the button. Like and subscribe. Or we won't we won't be thankful for you tomorrow. Or 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 Krampus is gonna get you during yeah. Christmas, which is a few months away. Yeah, so and the Grinch is out. gonna hit you the back of the head yeah all right see ya see you on the patreon